there's big news in the F1 driver market. I'm Fernando Alonso, and I'm here to stay. Fernando Alonso will be wearing Aston Martin green in 2025 and 26. Hello and welcome to a special edition of F1 Nation. I'm Tom Clarkson, here to chat about Alonso's decision and what it means for the rest of the F1 driver market. With the 1996 world champion Damon Hill and former McLaren driver and current Aston Martin ambassador Pedro de la Rosa. Pedro, let's start with you. This is huge news. It is fantastic news, Tom. Really, really pleased about it. I think it's great. It's it's great for, for Formula One, first of all, because uh, let's not forget that Fernando was considering retiring. So I think that the first thing we have to say, it's great for Formula One, for the fans. Fernando wants to stay, wants to continue in Formula One, uh, and not only one year, you know, I think this is the, the other headline. And it's with Aston Martin. So it's also great for all of us, for all the mechanics, engineers, partners. Uh, it is fantastic. Really, really pleased about it. And uh, and he, you know, I, the, the, the point really here is that Fernando could pursue or could have pursued other options, but he decided to stay with us. And, and I think this is also very, just gives credit to our whole project. He talked about this being the longest contract he's ever signed in his career. And I think he's still going to be racing when he's 45. I mean, Damon, that is Fangio levels of commitment and experience. Someone told me that would be the, the, the oldest uh, Formula 1 driver since my dad in, in 1975. So he was 45 when he retired. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, Fangio, you're right. Didn't start till he was 38. So what is age anyway, Tom? You know, it's just a number. I agree with with Damon. I mean, it shows a great commitment from Fernando at his age, but let's not forget it also shows a great commitment from Aston Martin Formula One team, in the sense that they are committing to a driver that's 43. They don't care about the the age really. They only and we only care about performance. And it is clear Fernando is. You could argue if he's he's speaking at this moment in his age. At his age, given, I mean, the last race we had in Suzuka was uh, outstanding from from Friday to Sunday. So great commitment. uh, And it just uh, gives a great credit to the whole project, our new wind tunnel, new campus, new simulator, everything that's going on. And people might not know, but it's just happening. Fernando knows. And also it's an endorsement of the the Honda project as well, because they're going to be full on Honda. And Red Bull are going to go with their Red Bull powertrain. So maybe they're going to have, you know, the Honda element of whatever Red Bull have been benefiting from is going to be unplugged from them. They'll be they'll be having to swim without armbands or whatever the, um, the metaphor might be. Um, so I think it shows faith in that project. It shows faith in, obviously, it's well-funded, Aston Martin, and it's got this project of developing. It's only going to get better with its wind tunnel. So... But it, it, well, the reason he's there is because he's exceptional, not because, you know, he's a good you know bloke to have around. He is exceptional, and that's why they've taken the plunge and and done something un- so unusual for our sport to sign someone up into their mid forties. You know, it, beyond forty seemed to be the end, didn't it? I mean, most people packed it up about thirty nine or forty, and and uh, like me, and uh, and you know, <laughs> I, I haven't got anything left, so I don't know how he does it. Tom, let's be realistic. I mean, I signed for Aston Martin also for a reason. I didn't sign because Fernando was there. When when I when I decided or I just wanted to to come into Formula One again and return with Aston Martin, it was because I saw the project. I went to Silverstone, I saw the new campus, all the project, the wind tunnel, and I said, Wow, I want to be here. Then I was lucky that Fernando joined. But I didn't know that Vettel was retiring, that Fernando was coming in. And also the other headline, Tom, and you will laugh about this one, is that Fernando will stay for with Aston Martin. Basically, I mean, he said it's the longest contract I've ever signed. So Fernando will retire in Aston Martin. Uh, and then it means that Pedro will be out. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think that Fernando is in. <laughs> Fernando is in, Pedro will be out. So that's also good news, I think, for the, for the team. <laughs> you got to go back to making tea, Pedro. Yes, whatever, Damon. It's not a problem for me. Pedro says that, you know, that race in Suzuka from Fernando was exceptional from Friday through Sunday. And, and Fernando was very quick to remind us of what had gone on that weekend on Sunday night. But he does say that quite a lot. He will say, that was my best qualifying lap I've ever yes. done. That was my best weekend I've ever done. And you're right. He did say that after Suzuka. And- but, but, but Tom, maybe he's right. 
I, you know, maybe he's just getting <laughs> yeah, better, true, you know. Right? So, so every time is one of his best. But, I mean, just from what I, I mean, watching there, looking at the data, how he was driving inside the, the team, um, it was impressive. I don't know if it was one of his fifth or sixth uh, best ever races, but he's, uh, he's speaking. The guy is speaking. He's really, he's really flying. So yeah, and having the the cold blood really to give him DRS to help Piastri defend from from George, that was that was fantastic. I think it was. Uh, it just proves that the that there's some drivers that can drive fast on the limit, but still have this 360 degree perspective of what's going on. Yeah, you know, we know he's clever. He thinks of every little window of opportunity that he can exploit which is completely well it's another level to to compare to a lot of drivers and and i've you know i think we all stand in awe i mean he sometimes he pushes that um cunning a little bit too far he's maintained his opportunism and attention to detail throughout his career and his pace uh and for me speaking as a 63 year old um he is one of the most promising and then youngsters uh, on the grid, <laughs> but but Damon, I don't know if if you would agree on me, but th- there's always two type of drivers. Uh, when you finish a race, I've seen the drivers, which I include myself into, is the the drivers that you jump out of the race, you are fully aware of your race, but you don't have a global picture of how the race panned out, who was on a one stopper, two stoppers, uh, which compounds, blah blah blah. And and so therefore you jump out of the car and you can see the drivers that go to their press officer to the manager and just ask them what happened, who won, what you know, what how many pit stops they did because they have no clue what happened except for their own race. And then the other the other drivers that just drink the drinks bottle, they're just uh, taking a breath, but they don't need to have any information whatsoever of what happened in the race because they were informed either by the race engineer or maybe the, 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 the huge TV screens, you know, so they have had the time to uh, to enjoy the race apart from their own race. And and Fernando is one of those. He made a big song and dance um, at the launch earlier this year saying he wanted to wait a few races to see whether he wanted to continue in Formula One in 2025 and beyond. And then even when he was speaking to the press about the new announcement, he was saying that the commitment that Formula One requires means that the rest of his life has to be put on hold and he, you know, maybe having his own family and things like that. You two would both be very good at talking about that commitment and that element of your life that, well, at least he thinks needs to be put on hold. We are all different and have, uh, I think that the level of intensity where Fernando is taking his commitment just uh, makes him think like that. But I think that one one thing that is very important is the fact that he was, Fernando always uh, kept to his words in the sense that at the beginning of the season, he was not sure if he wanted to continue in Formula One another year for 25. And he said, I need some time to think about and, and think how I progress during the year. And then when I'm prepared, I will let you know. And he kept to his words. The moment he realized that his energy levels were high enough that he wanted to commit to more more Formula One driving, he 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 just said, I want to continue with Aston Martin. So I think that the question really was not with which team, but if he wanted to continue in F1 and uh, the level of intensity uh, in which he approaches the sport is uh, it's very, very critical. It was very critical for him. I think the fact that a driver that's 43 years old wants to commit to a minimum of two extra in the sport uh, with his level of commitment and with 24 races this season planned. Uh, it's just a great message also to the to the new generations that they shouldn't rush it in because they are just living in a world where if you are uh, you know if you are 20 years old you are already too late to get into Formula 1. I mean, I've met the Formula 3 drivers that I'm too old for Formula 1. I'm already 20 years old, you know, and I'm what are you talking about? You know, I got into Formula 1 with 28 and I still had a long career until 43. So the fact that Fernando is extending his career, he just has to give a message to the young drivers that they shouldn't be the 18 and in Formula 1 like Antonelli will might be next year, you know. It is just it's it's a different world. I mean, we can extend the career. Fernando is a clear example. 
don't rush it in. If you get to 20 in Formula One with 25, you can make it to 40 at a very high level nowadays. That That is the message, basically. I think it's also, we should remember that Fernando had a bit of a, a, a break from F1, didn't he? Just like Kimi as well. And uh, who else has done that, you know, and come back? Um, I think Michael, maybe you could add, uh, although Michael didn't come back quite so. They got pole position at Monaco and stuff. But, you know, I think if you're going to have a time, I think time out, they come back stronger because they realise how much they want it and how much they miss it. Uh, you know, so a bit of time out maybe is, if for a long career, isn't a bad idea. You know, maybe that's that's the way forward and people can then come back with their the second half of their career is refreshed and also clearing up in their mind, you know, what they're going to do with their life. Because uh, I think like you've got Sebastian Vettel on the on the touchline, sort of not exactly discounting ever coming back. Maybe a break is a good idea. Pedro, you first worked with Fernando back in 2007 at McLaren. Is the 2024 spec Fernando different to the one that you worked with back then? Look, uh, when Fernando came to McLaren, it was amazing the amount of uh, things we learned from him one of the things that we all learned and when i say we all is all all the team i mean uh, all the drivers is we realized that this guy already back in 2007 was lifting and coasting he was already doing that he was on the outlap saving fuel like you would not believe just to extend his uh, pit stop. I mean, it's it's a very common use technique nowadays, but back then was was very, very new in the sense that uh, in order to either uh, save fuel or cool down the brakes and rear tires, you just, as, as you approach to a braking zone, you Back off the throttle, let the aerodynamics basically do all the stopping, all the braking with uh, without touching the brakes. And then in the last moment, once the car already has decelerated, you pick up the brakes. Uh, the, the, the effect is that you are less time on full throttle. Therefore, you 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 gain some, you, you save some fuel, plus the fact that you are braking for a shorter time. So you keep the brake temperatures down. All, all it's, it's really incredible. I mean, it's it is used... But it's also, it was used, uh, Fernando was the first driver I ever saw that he was already using it in an era where it was not well known. Uh, but it was uh, it was uh, also data, thanks to data, we all got that information and managed to implement that technique in future races. But it, he was the first I ever saw, yeah, so impressive. Let's discuss the ramifications of Alonso staying at Aston Martin on the rest of the driver market. I mean, it's great for Aston Martin that Alonso's staying, but that surely means one potential door for Carlos Sainz has closed. The idea that Carlos would displace uh, Fernando, I'm not sure if he's got the nerve to do that. <laughs> but, um, but anyway... Uh, I think that Pedro is the person to, to to correct me on this one, but maybe Lance, if decides to go go and play tennis or something, you know, two Spanish drivers would be a very strong team at Aston Martin. Why should Lance uh, uh, not not continue, Damon? I mean, there's uh, every reason to continue in the team with all the projects, and that's the reason why Fernando decided to stay. So he's had two incredible races in Jeddah and and Australia, where. There was some parts of the race that he was faster than Fernando. He was uh, he finished behind him, uh, well, in fact, in Australia, in front of him. So, I mean, come on! I mean, why would you want to not continue racing if you can see what's going on behind the scenes in the factory with the new wind tunnel, with the people joining the team, uh, which is we're generating here a, 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 an an incredible team for the future. So, I think also changes on the driver lineups about in Formula One if you have a strong lineup and uh, I don't believe uh, I just believe that the way we should keep going is just by keeping our drivers because that's the strongest team we can be I, I think that I think that the, the, the question was not uh, I mean if uh, Carlos would join or if you know I mean the thing the real question that was on the table was if Fernando wanted to continue in F1 it's not everyone was talking about teams and movements and uh, you know after uh, Luis decided to 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 join Ferrari for 2025 but the reality within our team and with uh, Fernando 
was always that, I mean, the only question that he had to uh, answer to himself is, do I want to continue in F1 at this le- and show this level of commitment? You know, that that was the, the question. Once it was answered, I think the deal will happen very fast. And the, the, re- the, the fact that the team, Fernando, w- wanted to communicate this so fast was mainly because uh, we have an interesting project on the table. Why should we hide it to the world? So what does this mean for science then? In the Suzuka paddock, it was definitely him being linked to Aston Martin and, and Audi seems now to be in pole position to get his services. Would you agree? They've got big plans. They're not going to come in to F1 uh, half-baked, are they? A company like Audi. So they could be offering Carlos a huge amount to go to what is Sauber at the moment, but will be Audi eventually. Yeah, th- there's so many question marks, uh, Tom, about uh, what will happen uh... On, uh, with with Mercedes, with Red Bull. So I think that it is just up to Carlos to decide if he wants to join either Audi or wait and see if there's anything opening up. So it is, uh, we are in uh, in the silly season in April, basically. You know, it has, uh, we just, uh, it's happening four months too early. I'm going to put Tom on the spot here, Pedro, because he keeps asking us the questions. I'm going to say to Tom, because you, you, you've got a fair bit of knowledge about Formula One and the way things happen, haven't you? So, are you, Red Bull, are you going to replace Checo and put in a new driver? Or are you happy with Checo? Um, whether I, whether, because it's my decision, obviously, Damon. Um, I'm if, obviously <laughs> called talking about Carlos going to Red Bull. That's what I'm basically saying. It's, you know, would they would they do that? It all depends on what Max Verstappen does, doesn't it? If Max Verstappen stays at Red Bull for 2025, I would see no reason to replace Sergio Perez. I'm assuming he's staying. Right. If, if he's staying, then I think, you know, Checo is Max's longest serving teammate. I feel he's turned a page this year. He understands his role in the team. He understands his role alongside Max. He seems to have raised the bar. You just, you just actually unlocked an amazing scenario whereby... Max leaves Red Bull and then Carlos goes to Red Bull. But then where does Max go? His only option now is to go to Mercedes, isn't it? Yeah. Now that Fernando is locked in at Aston Martin, it's Max is either going to stay at Red Bull or he's going to go to Mercedes. In Japan, uh, I was told by several people that Toto Wolff is pursuing Max very strongly. He yeah. needs a signature signing because obviously the last three years haven't been going very well for the team. And it would be a real statement of intent, wouldn't it? Yeah. If he got Max Verstappen, um, and it was even mentioned to me that he's said to Max, bring Helmut Marco with you, if that's what it requires. Uh, so a bit of an Austrian super team at the top of Mercedes. But is that going to happen? Is he going to sacrifice winning another world championship in 2025 with Red Bull? I, I find that really hard to believe. So... I now see a bit of a little bit of static in the driver market. I see Max staying, I see Checo staying, we see Fernando Alonso staying. So the only question mark is what happens alongside George Russell? Is that going to be Carlos Sainz? Is that going to be Kimi Antonelli who is testing for uh, Mercedes at the Red Bull Ring in a couple of weeks time? Uh, but equally is Toto Wolff going to want to give Antonelli a little bit of mileage? And he turns 18 at the end of August. And 18 uh, is the magic number in Formula One now because you can't race younger than that. So could we see Antonelli do the second half of the season at Williams before then getting uh, plugged into the Mercedes next year? Who knows? But uh, now it's all about Mercedes. Wow, Tom, you you know a lot. You know a lot, Tom. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, yes. You know more than uh, than Formula One itself, you know? I mean... <laughs> I'm just full of it, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, is the secret to this, the new engine regulations and the progress or the lack of progress that is being shown up and down um, the, the grid? You've got Red Bull powertrains. Are they having difficulty at the moment? Is it look, turning out to be a little bit more complex than they thought and the prospects of the future at Red Bull for Max you know if he's got doubts about their powertrain um, progress then maybe he might be looking at Mercedes Mercedes may be a little bit more confident with the new regulations so this is going to I think this is going to be the competitive prospects are, are, are surely going to be key for for Max he's going to be the only reason he's going to leave Red Bull is if he thinks that they're going to be losing 
an advantage. I, I fully agree with Damon. I fully agree. And I think that that's why I think personally uh, that things won't change much in 25. Apart from the fact that obviously uh, Luis will go to Ferrari, as we all know. That's uh, that's my view. I think for 2026, things can change. Yes, especially because there's a big uh, regulation change on, on the car and on the engine side. So we will see. But we are in 24. We've only done four races, 20 to go. We have 25 in front of us as well. So I think we are, I don't know, we're just talking a bit too much in general in the paddock. It's just about these uh, drivers changing teams. And I think the photograph will be quite similar in 25 as we know it now. But when was the, I mean, you say we're talking too much, Pedro. When was the last time that there was so much potentially up for grabs? I can't remember a silly season like this. Well, the silly season was normally in the summer, during the summer, no? And we've been already, before the season started, we were talking already about the silly season. So it's a really long silly season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's that, the silly season started in February when 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 Lewis Hamilton said, I'm going to drive for Ferrari. Yeah, it's so his fault. <laughs> it's, I mean, that definitely put us on a thing we didn't see coming. Just want to add something on this, actually, because, you know, we, we've got our listeners here and they're trying to understand this this mad sport as as we are. But, you know, one of the things that always amazed me when I started with Formula One was how soon people started talking about who's going to be driving where before we'd even got to, you know, a third of the way into the season. And but it's absolutely crucial because your career, you know, that it's these moving tectonic plates in Formula One, things do not stay the same. Here we are, we're going back to China. You look at the grid, you look at the drivers, it's completely different. You need to look back to see how much things have changed in that period of time. So as a driver, it's really, really difficult to know which, when to jump, where to jump to. You know, it's, that is part of the game of Formula One is, is, is choosing which team to back and also seeing it, uh, whether an opportunity is coming up. Um, so it's, it, it, it's part politics, part um, investment strategy, it's part, you know, and then the driving, of course, you know, and people will judge you in your last race as well. So you know, a good race is a good time to, to sign. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I got into Formula One, I remember that uh, one, one person came to me and said, you will need a manager. And I said, why? And they said, because as soon as you sign your first contract in Formula One, you need a manager to make sure that you can break it at the right time. You know, <laughs> so I think that summarizes very well what Formula One is like, you know, and uh, that's uh, the jungle we, we live in. Final thoughts on what Alonso staying at Aston means, both for the team and for him. Tom, look, uh, you know, since uh, it was uh, made public, this uh, announcement, uh, I've received so many messages from friends in Spain, fans, uh, but more importantly, in a way, it's also internal reactions from mechanics, engineers, people from within the Aston Martin Formula One team. They are so happy to have Fernando uh, again for the future, you know, for the next season. So I think that this summarizes very well what we all feel, how happy we feel that he's in Formula One, but more importantly, that he's in in our team. And and this is it's an extra motivation, really. You know, we will have soon all the tools to become more and more competitive, but we also need the people and uh, the people are fully motivated when they know that Fernando, that we are keeping our driver lineup. And that is uh, that is uh, self-assuring, I would say. I'm very proud to be working with Fernando, even if that means, again, that uh, when he decides to retire, he will become the Aston Martin ambassador and Pedro de la Rosa will be out. I don't care. I don't care. As long as it's for the, you know, for the, for the competitiveness of, uh, of Aston Martin. I'm happy to do that. I will sacrifice my position happily. <laughs> Girl, such, such loyalty is touching, Pedro. It's, uh, my heart is swelling. It's, uh, it's great to hear, isn't it? Um, but um, I, I, I think it's fantastic. He's pushing the limits. He's always pushed the limits. He's always one of those drivers who've tried to get everything out of every single lap in his car and he's going to get every single you know, lap out of his career as well. So he's a star of the sport and, and and we need him, basically. We need drivers like that and we need drivers, younger drivers to learn from from how he's gone about his career. Yeah, good point, Damon. Great point. I think that you've made a, raised a really good point. I think that we need also to have someone that 
a leader in, with, within the drivers, you know, for, for, the, for the young generations to come as well and learn. He is a superstar. There's lots more analysis on Alonso's decision to stay at Aston Martin and the rest of the driver market on F1.com. Pedro, Damon, thanks very much for your time. And we'll be back on Monday with a full preview of the Chinese Grand Prix. F1 Nation is produced by Formula One and Audio Boom Studios.